Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. This week's research, well, I thought I'd do something a bit personal. I thought I'd research into a Galileo thermometer. Just a little bit over. Here's mine. Normally sits in my lounge room, but I've brought it in here so we can actually look at this. And we'll use this a couple of times during the video. Been around for a long time. Now, most people... They've seen these, you know, the large glass tubes, they're filled with liquid, and then they've got these floating glass balls in there. It's cold, so all the balls are at the top today. But as the weather heats up, these balls will slowly drop down. The device is called a Galileo thermometer, and it's used to tell the temperature of the space that it's sitting in. That is a very basic answer, so let's look at some more details about it. The thermometer... Although it's called a Galileo thermometer, it actually wasn't created by Galileo. In the early 1600s, Galileo, he did create a device called a thermoscope. And this inspired academics and technicians at the Academia del Cimento in Florence. Hopefully I haven't butchered that too much. This group included Galileo's student Torricelli and Torricelli's student Viviani. The details of the thermometer, they were first published in the Academy's main publication in 1666. An English translation was created in 1684, and that described the devices as being slow and lazy. So the thermometer works by having a sealed tube, as we can see here, sealed at the bottom, and then sealed at the top with a little air gap. Inside, we've got this clear liquid. This liquid, although it looks clear, it isn't actually water. It's filled with what was called in that original paper, rectified spirits of wine. Essentially, a concentrated solution of ethanol and water. The floating balls, they're made of glass, and each ball has got a different colour. This colour, to be honest, it's just for decoration. It makes absolutely no difference to what it's doing. All the balls are then created their ground so that they're the same size and weight now when you're creating a handmade item obviously there are some slight differences in the size and the weight of each and this is partly where the colored liquid does make a difference so they can adjust the amount of liquid they put in to get each of these balls to be the same weight at the bottom of each ball down here we can see at the bottom there's this metal tag that's actually what is used to make a difference in the weight so each of these tags they're calibrated to a specific temperature so in this one the bottom one is 18 degrees then we've got 20 and it keeps going all the way up until we get to 36 degrees it's been with all of them down quite a few times so by having that that different counterweight on there those metal tags what it does is it changes the mass of each of the balls because with the metal weight pulling down adds a bit more mass and it's this difference in mass that drives how the thermometer works. As the temperature of the environment changes, it drives a change in the density of the clear liquid. So this clear liquid in the thermometer. This, it's actually driven by expansion. When the liquid gets warmer, then it expands. When it gets cooler, it will contract. This expansion and contraction alters the density of the liquid. Because each ball has a different weight, as the density of the liquid changes, the density of the balls, they remain the same. So the ball, it either sinks or floats. This process, it's driven by gravity. As the density of a floating object becomes more than the density of the surrounding liquid, then gravity takes effect and the object sinks. As a slight aside, I've mentioned density a couple of times. All density is, is the ratio between the mass of an object to its volume. By adding tags of different weights, so here we've got the ball with a tag on the bottom, that increases the mass and that then changes the actual density of that little system of ball and weight. The temperature of the environment, that's then determined by looking at the tag of the lowest ball that is still floating. So I say it's cold today, so I know it's definitely below 18 degrees. I think it's currently about 15 degrees in here. So that's why all the balls are up at the top. In a month's time, as it starts to warm up, this bottom one will sink as we get to temperatures over 18 degrees. The device that we're using today, 
It's actually driven through a revival that was started by the Natural History Museum in the 1990s. This one, which is one that I have, I bought it in South Africa in the early 2000s. Although I've always had a rough idea how it works, you know, I knew that these were different weights, it's been nice to be able to dig further into the details to actually find out and understand how it works. As I said, this lives in my lounge room. You know, I look at it multiple times a day. You know, I'm sat there and where it's located, it's easy to see when I'm watching the TV or reading. Similar to my fountain pen hobby, it's really nice to have an analog way of seeing the temperature. Yes, I know it's not very accurate. There's two degrees between each of these different balls, but it's really nice because yes, it's telling me the rough temperature, but it also doubles up as a nice decorative item. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've really enjoyed this one. I, I like digging into things that I think I understand and sometimes it cements, it solidifies my knowledge. And quite often, like with this, it does fetch in some new knowledge as well. If you've got any things that you'd like me to do a video about, please drop them in a the comment down below. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.